Behind You's podcast crew would like to thank the following sponsors for their generous support. If you have a little one and you're going to Walt Disney World, you're going to need a stroller. I'll tell you what, kingdomstrollers.com is the place where you want to look into. I'll tell you, you know, I've destroyed my fair share of strollers while, while at Walt Disney World, and those things are not cheap. But getting something from kingdomstrollers.com, they'll be able to help you pick out the perfect stroller for you. And the nice part is, is that because they're a Disney preferred provider, they'll be able to drop it off and pick it up right from your Disney resort at no extra charge. So if you don't want to necessarily destroy your stroller in the process, and you want to have a great Disney vacation with your little one, contact kingdomstrollers.com and they'll set you right up. That's kingdomstrollers.com. A new coffee for Expedition Roasters, Curacao and Curacao. This tag says drink me for a Wonderland coffee crumb cake experience. Oh my, I feel so exhilarated. And look at all of these other handcrafted themed coffees and teas they have. It's like falling down a rabbit hole into the most wonderful coffee and tea party. Now you better hurry, you don't want to be late. So head over to expeditionroasters.com to brew a little magic at your home. Behind the Ears podcast listeners, be sure to use code EARS20 for 20% off your next purchase with us. Brew your happy place. To you live from our studios on the East Coast and in the Midwest, it's the Behind Ears Podcast, because everybody does Disney differently. Welcome back, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Behind the Ears Podcast. Once again, if you are new, welcome. If you are a longtime listener, thanks for showing up. We go live every Tuesday and Thursday at 9.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Facebook and or YouTube um yeah like chris says follow us on all the social media platforms do all that fun jazz outside of that we have a what you think about this it's gonna be more of a relaxed show where we're gonna you know fire some questions and some hypotheticals uh at each other see how we answer obviously you're more than welcome to join in the chat comment section well not the chat the the comment section yeah the comment section and let us know if you have any questions or what your answer would be to the question um with that being said without further ado mr chris how are you on this fine friday eve 
I'm actually doing pretty good. It has been a busy week. I am glad that the week is almost over. Um, I have a feeling that after I am done recording that um, I have a feeling I'm, I'm getting messages from work. So we ought to, this ought to be an interesting evening. I uh, might find myself uh, putting in a full shift after this. So we'll have to see how it's going. The luxuries of living, of working at home, right? Yeah, I guess it, if you call it a luxury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, how, so how have you been doing? Are you ready for this weekend? Yeah, it's supposed to be beautiful. Uh, they're saying uh, mid 90s, sunny, uh, better than the weather we're having right now. Crazy thunderstorms outside, and I uh, got some thunderstorms rolling in tomorrow. But hey, I don't mind working in the rain. I would rather the beautiful weather when I am off. So, why don't we use that as something of a segue to what we're doing tonight? You know, what you think about people who actually try to go to Disney during a hurricane? I know that sounds kind of like a weird question to ask, but we have seen this done. Even yours truly one time decided to go get down to Florida a day early before Hurricane Jean back 10, 11, some odd years ago, a long time ago, actually. Now, what do you, what you think about people who actually try to go to Disney to take cover for a hurricane? And I'm talking about locals as well as those from out of town. What do you, what do you think about that phenomena? Honestly, man, I think it's a cool idea. I, I understand like, you might look at it and be like, why would anybody put their self in the path of a storm? Um, and I get that safety aspect and, you know, people really shouldn't do it because that's just an extra body that now <laughs> Disney needs to worry about any, you know, first responders need to worry about, but let's take out the, the, the common sense aspect of it and let's go to the fun part. And I'm going to say, it sounds like an absolute blast. And I have thought, thought about it in the past of just, grabbing a backpack full of clothes, calling Lindsay. Hey, listen, hurricane's coming out. See you in a little bit. Going down to Florida. want to ride this puppy out of Polynesian. Um, <laughs> ride it out of Polynesian. There you go. Um, I think it sounds, it, it's interesting. I would like to see how, you know, we heard the stories we've had for, we've had people come on the show and talk about what it's like being in Disney for a hurricane and all the activities and things they do to keep you from going from having cabin fever. Um, I, I, I kind of like it. I like the idea and I would like to see exactly firsthand how everything shakes out down there. Obviously staying safe is the number one priority, but um, I, I'm not against it. I just, I guess at the same time, I kind of am like, don't, don't make other people's lives harder when their families are at home and they're worried about them. And they now need to come out in a tugboat to come find you to make, you know, cause you're swimming in seven seas lagoon because you got picked up by a big, you know, wind storm. Um, yeah, I guess be mindful of it, but, uh, I, I'm not, I guess I'm not opposed for me personally, from the general public, I would be like, shame, shame, shame. Don't do that. You know, it's one of those cases where we are in the middle of hurricane season and, you know, we're talking now where there is like the first named tropical storm that's coming against, you know, through the Gulf, which technically it really shouldn't really impact central Florida in a sense of severe weather. Yeah, they're going to get some rain probably out of it, but <clears throat> it's one of those, one of those things where it's not really going to hit Florida. Um, I do know that there are people that will probably go to or, you know, Orlando in order to try to, you know, steer away from it, which I can understand. Um, there have been, I've known people to get stuck down there. Uh, you know, when a hurricane would hit in the middle of their trip, my take on it is this, everybody tends to ask, um, you know, should I be concerned about hurricane season? And I think my two cents on it is you should be concerned about it from a planning perspective, but don't let it, you know, don't let it ruin your trip. But obviously your safety should come first. Don't put yourself in harm's way. But if it's not a cruise, don't worry about it. <clears throat> um, you know, Disney does give refunds back if travel, you know, if there is a hurricane that is going to directly hit the Disney world area, um, Disney will work with you. This is, and I mean, if you want to be on the safe side, um, you know, always just maybe throw some travel insurance on there. Uh, if you're traveling during hurricane season, but my thing is in the park. No, I wouldn't necessarily be too cautious about when planning a trip. If you're talking Disney cruise line, that's a completely different story. You know, you're on a floating rubber ducky out in the middle of the ocean, you know, getting hit by, you know, 20 foot swells. That's that's a different story. Yeah. I mean, because like, you know, Brian mentions, you know, 
this tropical storm will in impact planes. Yeah, it's going to impact planes where it's hitting. It may impact impact flights in general. Those kinds of things shouldn't really affect like the Northeast. No, it really shouldn't, unless for some reason those planes are coming from the Southeast quadrant. I, that's the thing. Planes do have to be rerouted and things like that. Just if you're flying during this time and your flight gets delayed, relax. Just because, I mean, the airlines will do whatever they can to make it happen. It's nothing to panic about. But yeah, I totally, I totally get it. So anyway, that was my first what you think about question. Okay. What you think about all these... This, all right, I'm, I'll rephrase. I'll make it a little more straightforward question. How yeah. do you feel about oh, an entire resort being designated only for DVC? Speaking of the Riviera. Well, I'm not really sure about the question because, because DVC resorts are technically... All yeah, but, but they're connected to a regular resort is what I'm saying. Oh. Like a freestanding building where you can <laughs> only be DVC to go into that building whether rent, own, whatever the case is. Well, okay. I'll answer your, I'll answer your question, but then I'm going to quantify it at the very end. No, I think I need to quantify it at the, at the beginning. By law, there can't be 100% DVC rooms. There has to be, by law, some rooms available with cash. That, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you can't get away from it. So, But I understand your question, but you have you have resorts that are strictly built from the ground up as DVC resorts, such as Saratoga. Um, you know, Saratoga, Vero Beach, Hilton Head, um, you know, all those are basically built as, you know, DVC from the ground up. Yeah, you can get cash rooms. But, um, you know, I don't really have a problem with it because some DVC members that I don't think plan as much as I do sometimes get into a jam where they say, oh, I always run into availability problems. And I usually ask some questions like, you know, when's your trip? Oh, my trip is four months from now. Well, hashtag, there's your problem. Yeah. Um, you know, just like, you know, DBC never says they guarantee you a room during the time that you want to go. Unless, you know, there's only a couple resorts that allow a certain week, so to speak, that you actually buy into a particular week, but that's 1%. It's, you know, very small percentage of some of the rooms over like the poly and stuff like that. But for the most part, you know, I don't see it to be a problem. Um, I like being at a DVC resort when, you know, I know I'm mostly surrounded by members in such a way. It's so there's a little bit of a camaraderie among members. I'm not, Saying that is like a, a cl I'm not saying it's clicky, um, but you know I like Saratoga. It's my home resort. Um, you know I've been at I've been at pretty much every resort, and the interesting thing is is that you know even for like Wilderness Lodge has DVC put onto it. You have Animal Kingdom Lodge that has like one whole you know building that's you know was built with DVC. Is it like that? Bay Lake Tower was built from the ground up as a DVC portion. Um, so, you know, those are some really nice places. And I think that they are good for DVC. They're good for DVC members. Um, just my two cents. I don't know if that really kind of. Um, I mean, it somewhat answered it. I, I'm just a little perplexed on, you know, di I mean, I, I shouldn't say that. I understand why Disney pushes DVC. <laughs> There's more money in it, obviously. You know, you're paying the upfront deed cost of, you know, anywhere from fifteen to thirty thousand plus and climbing. Uh, you have your maintenance fees. What do they do? Quarterly, yearly, monthly, weekly? I pay my I pay my dues annually. Annually, okay. And I, and um, I have it budgeted. I save it up through the year and I pay it. I put it on my Disney Visa card. I get my money, my, some points back on it. It's a good thing. Yeah. Um, but looking at it overall, I just as an I guess as a non DVC member and knowing that DVC is not in my future, um, you know, and I thought it was, and I had put money aside for it, and I started looking into other places that offer similar timeshares. We'll we'll quantify it of it. 
um, and being able to get onto Disney property with the outside uh, sources, it, it just it doesn't make sense to me. You know, I know Disney's looking short. You know, I mean, you can make more money short term than you can long term. If that, if that, I know that statement doesn't make much much sense, but you think about what, how many points it would cost you to rent a standard room at Poly compared to what Disney charged for that standard room, and it's way cheaper if you're a DVC member if you break it down. And you know, here's the thing: we're, and I'm going to throw this up here because Gordon is one of the people I know that has wanted to talk about this. I'm going to bring on the show. Um, if it's not going to be next week, it'll be like in the beginning of August of uh, a gentleman that I know that is that has a, a DVC podcast that is very, very knowledgeable and he can help people break it down. Um, DVC is not for everybody. I'm going to be the first person to say that. And it, it is a financial um, commitment, but it's one where after I paid off my DVC membership, oops, wrong one. And um, once I paid off my, my DVC membership, I can get 10 days worth of rooms if I do it right for basically just what my dues are, which is less than the cost of a value. So the thing of it is, is that my mortgage at that time was basically what I was putting into cash rooms at deluxe resorts anyway. So I just kind of put it into my mortgage for DVC. And once that was paid off, boom, done. So we'll definitely um, be talking about that on another show in more detail. And I'll definitely advertise that for when people, because uh, I know people really want to know more about DVC. So mm -hmm. we've listened and we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we have a special guest outside of myself. Because sometimes, hey, I can talk about it all day. Sometimes it's good to hear it from someone else too. All right, what you got for me? All right. So what do you think about, I know, what do you think about fireworks in general at some of the um, nighttime spectaculars? And let me elaborate a little bit on the question. Um, you know how there's usually a, a big discussion about like, say, Heppley Ever After versus Wishes? And a lot of people sometimes talk about the quality of the fireworks show and so on and so forth. Well, not necessarily using that as a specific example. What do you think about, you know, how Disney could probably do, uh, you know, really plus some of those fireworks shows or change them or make them somewhat random? I and mean, what are your thoughts on some of those fireworks shows? Uh, you know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a true American. I love me some fireworks. Very patriotic. Um no, but listen, I like fireworks, but I understand the expense of it. I understand the idea of the safety of it. Um, I'm a, I'm a right where they are right now with their firework display. I wouldn't be opposed of maybe changing up a few things, maybe changing out different colors or or different ways. Uh, you know, they they shoot up or what they project into the sky. But I'm okay with the way that they're moving towards uh, in reference to Happily Ever After with a lot more of the uh, projection style and then intermitted. Um, it, that was creepy. <laughs> intermitted um, uh, firework display inside of it. I'm all right with the way it is. You know, and, and I am pretty much as well. I mean, here's the thing. Um, like Brian says, Epcot's looks broken. Hollywood Studios, well, Hollywood Studios does have fireworks through not only well, Fantasmic, but also the Star Wars, uh, you know, Galactic Spectacular. They do have fireworks. See, and but Brian, Brian's statement is it's fair because it's his personal opinion, right, but it, it is skewed because he's saying happily ever gets boring. But that's coming from a local who's in the parks all the time. Yeah. I, I, unfortunately, just, Disney World doesn't – I don't want to say they don't care about the locals. That's an improper way to look at it. But they're more looking for the person who travels once a year, maybe twice a year, maybe once every couple of years, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's – you know, I I 
res- respectfully, you know, disagree with with that in a some, somewhat in the sense that it gets boring. Um, but from a local's perspective, it's a very valid point. But you know, I just I personally think the fireworks. It's just okay. Fourth of July fireworks. We had um, Chris and Cody, I believe, stream both, you know, from two different locations at the same time we had on the screen. And while we had some technical difficulties, uh, Cody basically showed that there was, it was such a madhouse on Main Street. And I think that's my biggest stink is I think it's, you have to be there in the front of the castle to see everything at the same time. So, it, I mean, it, if you want to see the projections, yeah, but I think you could be behind the castle and get a perfectly good angle for any of the fireworks. You can, people, you can, and it's you know, it's just I think it's it's interesting. Um, you know, like Karen mentions, you know, tourists want the wow factor, and I totally yeah. agree. Um, oops, wrong one. I, uh, Alex says it doesn't get boring. It gets better. He's a local. He doesn't go to Disney much. Fourth of July fireworks were awesome. Those five Fourth of July fireworks. Were yeah, brilliant. but you can't you can't count the Fourth of July or New Year's Eve. No. You can't count those. Those are spectaculars. Yeah, you really can't. Or or around Christmas because sometimes they do extra stuff around Christmas. You know, it's it's things it's thing things like that. I personally love. I'm a big fireworks person. I love fireworks, and to me, they don't get boring. Maybe it's also because one of the things I do along with the fireworks is. I love to try to uh, photograph fireworks and that is a lot harder than you think. So that's, that's something I will definitely say. Um, I, you know, fantastic to me, it's not a super big fireworks show. It's a nice spectacular. It's, it's more of a show than anything else. A multi multifaceted show. Although the finale with the fireworks, I just always get chills when I see that, to be honest with you. Um, Epcot, Epcot, believe it or not, has changed their fireworks and their laser stuff and lighting over and over again over the past 10, 15 years. Mm-hmm. Um, so to me, it always seems like there's always seems like the, there's a new element that um, a new element that, you know, I haven't seen before. So there we go. So, um, yeah, your turn. Okay. All right. Um, inside of World Showcase. If you could add one country, what would it be? And you have to tag it along with an IP from Disney. Mm. <clears throat> That's a tough one uh, because the tagging of an IP is, I think, more difficult than you think. Um y- <laughs> I, this the first country that comes into my mind is like Sweden, but you're going to say why Sweden? Yeah, I'm trying I'm to think what the IP is with that. Right, exactly. Well, the the reason why it, it popped in my mind is not really my full answer to it. it. Popped in my mind because my my son met the contingent troop from Sweden that has come over for the national or the excuse me the World Scout Jamboree uh, in a couple of weeks, and he got to meet their troop. And so he was telling me all about it. And I thought, you know, that would be kind of a cool country to have, you know, at Epcot. But would that mean everything is from Ikea? Um, <laughs> but which, what, what's the IP for that? Well, that's the thing. It's hard to figure out IP. Um, of course, you know, you would you would think, yeah, so I really can't do it with that. You gave me a really tough question, but I want to try to work it out. You know, I'm trying to think of also the different types of IP that it, like where they're based. That's what the thing is. It's hard to actually totally understand where the IP is based from because every story has something of an origin. Um, oh, that's so easy for that one. What? You can use the Swedish chef <laughs> from the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> make it Muppets based, but like have like the Swedish chef. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, we could do that. Um, <laughs> I always, I always joked around about how 
like for the American adventure, if they really wanted to throw IP, you put, you know, just make it cars based, you know, type of thing, you know, cause there's nothing more American than NASCAR or at least the piston cup. Yeah. Um, no, <laughs> that's a tough one. I mean, I'm going through the different countries and you've got some really good, you've got some really good, good IP, but like, what's the IP from Japan? Mulan is Chinese, right? Chinese. I think she's Chinese. Is she Chinese or Japanese? No, wait, she's Chinese. You know why? Because I met Mulan at China. I know that sounds stupid to say it like that. Forgive me. I, I'm not saying that in, in a way of trying to sound rude. I just had to think about that for a minute. And even if you think about it, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, what, what's the IP for Germany? According to this site, there's nothing from for Japan with an IP. Well, you know what? Coding actually brings up... Okay, this is a good one. Big Hero 6, sort of. For who? For Japan. Because it's based in San Fran's to San Fran, Tokyo. And it's kind of kind of Asian background type of thing. I, I, Cody has a good idea there. Um, oops, sorry. There you go. Hello, kitties in Japan are the IP. <laughs> oh. All right, I got mine. Ready? Yeah. Greece. Yeah. Hercules. Oh, that that's a slam dunk, right? Uh, you you can have you can have so much with Greece, and be ready to go. And I was like, ooh, when I the minute I thought of that question this afternoon, I was like, oh, that's a for, for whatever reason Hercules popped right in my mind. I was like, oh, that'd be easy to do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, not not all the countries currently have IPs. That was just my little twist because you see, it's more moving towards IP when they're doing certain things. You know, they're not building original rides anymore. You know, you've got Ratatouille, you've got Guardians of the Galaxy, you've got Tron. You know, they're bringing IPs staple to this. You know, the the new era of Disney. So that's why I wanted to throw the IP in there. And, and just in case people don't know, IP stands for intellectual property. In other words, bringing, bringing um, a, a brand within the brand, so to speak. But yeah, you know, um, let's see here. Mm. What do you got for me? Oh, you, 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 wait, wait, you asked me a question. No, I got mm -hmm. you. All right. So <clears throat> have you, have you seen, the menus or anything about this new uh, restaurant in Japan? No. No, you don't. Okay. Well, then I won't. I won't ask that question because. Well, let me ask you this. Okay. If you were not on the dining plan, okay, what do you think would be your top pricing? What is your price limit? What's your price ceiling for an entree? Well, and, you have to tell me what the entree is. That's no, 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 whatever. I mean, just like if you, you, you base, well, are you saying that it would depend on what it is? Well, yeah, because if you're telling me I can get like a 22 day age, you know, <laughs> T bone steak with a baked potato and a drink, you know, and you're like, it's going to cost you $75. I'll be like, sure, no problem. If you tell me it's $50 for a cup of split pea soup, I'm going to tell you, no way. So that's a very, that's a very subjective because I mean, I'll go up to $100 for a plate of food. I'll go more if it's worth it. It's just I gotta know what the item is to tell you if it's worth it or not. Okay, so they have a basically a, a wagyu tenderloin. Okay, I'm not a big it's, wagyu person, but all right. Again, it's ninety five dollars. That's that's a bit steep. What what's it, the ounce? What what are we talking here? Eight ounces? Mate, six. Let's call it six to eight. I, it no. didn't. Necessarily, you know, no, that's not worth it. No, I wouldn't do that. I mean, the whole the whole thing is that. Um, The whole thing about dining and cost is, you know, I do spend a lot of money on dining and I, I don't think twice about it. Nope. That I thought twice of. Yeah. First of all, Wagyu is overrated. Second of all, a hundred dollars for that steak. And that's even if it was six to eight ounces, that that's a stretch. Even that, if it was, I mean, even if it was 12 to 16 ounces. I still think that's, I think you got, I think when you're getting to that price, you're looking, you got to be looking at 18 ounce plus. Um, you know, I mean, what is, 
what is it? It's a twenty-two ounce cut for two at um, and, um uh, yeah, been, and I think that like, was last time I saw it was like one twenty-four, one thirty-six, and that's not bad if that's you think deal. for two people. That's 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 what sixty-five dollars a person. It's not for for an aged steak like that. That's actually a, that's probably the bargain of a lifetime. Yeah. Now, if you told me, like, hey, it's 100 bucks for a 24-ounce porter steak, I'd consider it. But at that time, I probably still, I mean, honestly, I probably wouldn't pull the trigger on that only because it's like, uh, I mean, I can get steak in a lot of places. Like, tell me why this steak is worth I would actually ask the waitress or waiter, the server, why Why is this worth $100? I mean, I'll buy it, but, like, i am be real disappointed if it's a $40 steak <laughs> and you just hit me with a $60 upcharge on it. Well, also, I think for some of those places that serve that level of cuisine, their service is impeccable. And sometimes the service, you're going to pay a little bit extra for that. That's just my two thing. Um, you know, it's kind of funny because uh, your best friend, Rudy, basically mentions um, he's doing Victorian Alberts next month. And he's digging in the couch cushions as we speak. In order While to- you're digging in those couch cushions, Rudy, why, why don't you find a proper outfit, you hillbilly? All right. Shirt and tie. Don't don't go to Walmart for it. Shirt and tie. Make sure it's ironed. Make sure you comb those three hairs on the top of your head. Look presentable. You are representing Disney Media. Don't look like a bum. I see how you dress. Don't do it. You know you're you're gonna ruin it for all of us. They're gonna shut the restaurant down after dealing with you. Just remember, Rudy. I don't treat you this way. Just remember. Well, somebody. You know what? Somebody's got to. Somebody has to give him the hard truth. You brought a tuxedo <laughs> shirt. Exactly. That is my thing. I hope they kick you out. I hope they let your beautiful wife in and they tell you, sir, you go eat the Casey's corn dog on the corner. That's 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 what you're dressed for. You're dressed for a hot dog. <sighs> okay. Um that's it. But it's, it's interesting you just say it. You, it would really actually depend. Um you know, it's one of those cases where I think one of the reasons I, I've always wanted to do any of the French restaurants in the France pavilion. I'm always afraid that it's going for the price. I'm not going to like it because if I really honestly don't like it and I wouldn't like it, let me rephrase that. I probably wouldn't like it, not because of what it, what uh, of the service or how it was done or anything like that. I would probably pick something that I find that doesn't match my taste. Okay. Like for example, I had a leg of lamb at California Grill one year. I've never had lamb. lamb well, not, at least not a leg of lamb. And I didn't necessarily care for the seasonings that was done it. It was still very good. It's just not something that I would order again if I given the chance. Didn't necessarily change my evaluation of the experience, but I found out something that I didn't like. <laughs> and And hey, let's face it. I'm a big guy. There's not much I don't like. It's as simple as that. I mean, oh, oh wait, anchovies on pizza. That's a no, no. Mm, anchovies are good. Right out of the can. Oh, yuck. All right. Yeah. Um, what if I told you that Disney is not going to charge for transportation? Is now going to charge for transportation? Correct. Like which transportation? Uh, all of them. All transportation. All tra- so let's say we'll, we'll, we'll like, a city, like, like a city bus. Got to swipe your bus pass in order to get to Magic Kingdom. Yeah, let's call it ten dollars a head to get the Magical Express from to and from the airport. Ten bucks each way, and then let's call it you pay another ten dollars per day, and it's unlimited transportation inside or around the parks. <clears throat> Only on you know. Monorail, gondolas, buses, and boats. I don't... It wouldn't be my favorite thing to hear about, I'm going to admit right now. But if the ultimate question in the back of your head is, would it stop me from going? No. If If your ultimate question is, would I start driving to the parks if I still had for parking? Cause you didn't say anything about that. <clears throat> I would probably say it would change my, it would definitely change my habits 
because if I'm going with my whole family, you know, and let's say it is 10 bucks a head, that's another 40 bucks a day. Um, yeah, that's that, you know, and I realize we're talking total speculation. So no one read into any of this, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so I, well, here's the thing. It's interesting you say that because there are still hotels that charge massive uh, hotel uh, resort fees for things like shuttle service to the parks. And they do that on a daily basis. In fact, I'm not going to mention the name, but I think there was a, uh, a major branded hotel that was rec that's recently sued over uh, um, you know, res uh, exorbitant resort fees and so on and so forth. So that's one thing I'm kind of thinking of. But ultimately, it would change the way I would do Disney. Um, I would probably drive more, that sort of thing. I would Uber a lot more. I'll tell you that much. I Uber a lot. So let me ask this. Let me do this. What you, what you think about your reasonings for doing more Ubering or possibly driving your own car? Because you've done that too. I've when never you, driven to Florida. I've rented a car down there. Correct. That's what I'm saying. But you've had a car on property. I, I'll, I'll use that as the as the same type of thing. You know what you what do you think about when you when you come to making a decision of whether or not you're going to actually drive yourself to a park? What are some of your criteria for that? My party, who I'm going with. Um, if I know I'm going and I'm going to be drinking and almost in every park, I don't. You got to remember, you know. American laws is 0.08 because of my job. I'm 0.04. So you're literally talking about a beer, maybe two beers or one strongly poured drink. And I'm over the technically my legal limit, not everybody else's legal limit, my legal limit. You're, Cause you have a CDL. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't uh, know that. I didn't know that was, so if you actually got pulled over and you blew 0 0.04, you can actually cop better, the cop better be smart enough to realize that I have a CDL and I just blew over a 0.04. I mean, but it's one of those loopholes where he could arrest me for DUI or he can simply be like, hmm, you're under the 0.08. I'm going to pretend like you don't have a CDL right now. It's also a risk I'm not willing to take, <laughs> you know? Um, uh, yeah, it, I mean, actually, the thing is, I didn't know that. That's a, yeah. I didn't know there's a differentiation between. Is that a Jersey thing or is that that you know of national? That, that's nationally what? Oh, wow. I did not know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just because we, you know we're on the road more and they need to monitor that. Um, why do I, uh, so outside of the party, it just really depends on why, what I, what I, what my goal is for that trip. If I know I want to do out things outside the park and I want to do the, you know, the outlet store and I want to go here and I want to go there. Um, yeah, I mean, I might rent a car, you know, it, you know, there's, there's plenty of Disney trips I've done in the past where I would fly in Orlando for a couple days and then I'll shoot down to Miami, shoot down to Tampa, shoot down to Fort Lauderdale, visit friends and family, check out real estate. And uh, those are times like, yeah, I'll just go rent a car and just take it for the week. Who cares? But um, outside of that, I mean, but I mean, the thing is, like, I can't even say because I Uber a lot, but it is different to Uber than have your car because it's just sometimes I don't feel like getting on the tram, going to my car, unlocking it, driving it. And then if I'm staying off properties, usually if I stay off property, I'm usually renting a car. But you always got to keep in mind, sometimes they hit you with a parking fee or hotel. Then you need to make sure your AP is active or have somebody who has an AP at that moment with you in the vehicle because I'm not paying to park at Disney. You're out of your mind. So, you know, and then if you are on property, you know, you got to worry about paying at the resort. It's just, mm, there's a lot of variables. It really, that's such a hard question to answer because every trip is going to be very different. Okay. That's a very interesting thought process because, you know, for us, I can't tell you the last time we actually drove to a park. Um, we have done little, I've, I've done the, hey, let's race to see who gets home first and have like my wife um, take a bus or a boat or something, I would end up getting into Diz Truck 1 and driving. Usually it's only a few minutes difference in most cases. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. All you right. Know, okay. we, have, we have one question. Let's go ahead. And, and we've actually invited people to ask their question. 
Margie, longtime listener, hi Margie, uh, has an actual. This is a tough question, and it's in my case. I, I know she's not doing this purposely, but in my case, I think it's a little loaded. Okay, and here's the question: What would you do? That would make you. What would What would you do to not go to Disney? And I'm assuming that would, the the wording of it really is. What would be a reason to not go to Disney? As I said, loaded question. Price. I mean, I, I mean, think about how expensive. Like, I love Disney. Obviously, look at the background. Look what we're doing on our spare time. We love Disney. But when push comes to shove, it, it sometimes mathematically doesn't make sense. Like, there's times I could literally go to Disney for four or five days for the same cost I can go to Jamaica for 11 days. You know, some, it, it all comes down to the cost of it. And do I think we're at a cost now? No, I mean, we're, we're high, but it, it's <clears throat> limited in my times. But if push came to shove, what would stop me from going is, yeah, I mean, if Disney continues to raise prices... Yeah, I, I, there, there's going to come a point where you don't make enough money to go. And I'm, you know, in the past, I might be like, oh, I'll just throw in a credit card. You know, as I've gotten a, a more serious relationship and more bills and everything, we don't, we try not to put anything on credit cards. We try to make sure we're saved and we have enough money to carry that trip in cash and pay for it. So we're not paying for a trip for a year and then putting another trip back on it. <laughs> um, yeah, price would probably have to be when it just becomes unrealistic. If the trip is costing more than what I'm making, you know what I mean? Well, you know, because the interesting thing is, is that I feel in some ways it's less for me, it's less price and more of circumstance because the circumstances determines whether or not I could afford something in a lot of cases. I've budgeted my Disney trips pretty well over the past 20 years. I've been pretty proud of that. I have canceled Disney trips. That sucks. It really sucks when you have to cancel it. But you know what? I will not go into debt for, for a Disney trip. And I don't think anybody should go into debt for a Disney trip. So I will postpone a trip. Notice I didn't say not go. I would say I will postpone a trip. And, you know, when, when I started building my house, I actually had a Disney trip all planned. And there was a time my wife and I were like, you know what? We probably need to not do this. And it really sucked. And we went back and forth on it for like a couple of weeks. And we finally said, you know what? You're right. This will be something we'll have to hold on to. And we'll, we'll do it after we're moved in and such. And, you know, the, 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 the hard part is, is that travel costs to me is a big factor um, time is also a factor. Uh, I used to fly all the time until those costs started going way high. So I started driving. Well, driving takes more time, obviously. So it's more of circumstance to me, in my opinion, because I'm still going to make Disney vacations my priority in vacationing experiences. Um, but it's, it's the life experience or the life, you know, things that happen. Um, now you see, the thing is I, you know, so Brian puts up there, um, I, you know, I think it's, you know, from time to time you should go elsewhere, show the kids more and really lets you appreciate Walt Disney world more. And we have, we've actually done that. Um, it's really nice because we'll go on small little adventures and, you know, also at the same time, you know, my son does a lot of different things like camping. Uh, my wife and I go on, uh, little excursions. Uh, we also do different things as a family. So Walt Disney World is not the only thing we do for leisure, but when it comes to our extended week long trip or, you know, 10 day trip type of thing, that is our choice. So yeah, we, we do, we do, um, you know, make sure that it's a, a variety type See, of thing. Like, you know, I mean, there is a plan in the, I'm not going to call it the near future, but in the future, of us moving down to Florida and now we would not live in the Orlando area. I would be West coast and further South, but you know, ideally what would like to become would be, you know, 
roughly where I'm looking to be at it's three hours from Disney. So that would be my little weekend getaway would be Disney. Get the annual passes. You do a couple little trips up there. And yeah. then really, obviously, when you have kids, be able to travel the world where they can have Disney in their backyard. A three hour drive is nothing. You know, it's one, two, three. Um, you know, having Disney in your backyard like that and being able to go, you know, for an extended weekend or something like that. But, you know, I want my kids to see the rest of the world and more importantly, the rest of the country. Um, you know, we live in a very beautiful country with a lot of hidden gems. And right now it's just, you know, I enjoy going to Disney. But I mean, you know, I, I get the idea of traveling elsewhere, but I'm going to move on to my next question. So I want to redesign the American Pavilion because I think it is an absolute disaster. Right. Give me a region. So we'll go. We'll just go entire West Coast. Northeast, Southeast, Midwest, Southwest. Yeah. Pick one of those regions for food wise for the American Pavilion. Oh, my gosh. Dude, that is such a hard decision to make because someone's always going to get ticked off that you didn't pick their part. Okay. You know, because you like you can say Southwest, you know, you're looking at Southwest cuisine, which obviously has a Mexican flair, but not necessarily genuine Mexican. You have West Coast, which is more fresh flavors and a lots, you know, probably more vegetables and healthier eating and so on and so forth. You have the Midwest, which let's face it, you know, the Midwest is, and also the, I'll say the Southern Midwest part, you know, you're talking about, you know, Farmville, so to speak. And, you know, so you're talking, you know, you're talking beef, chicken, you know, you're talking protein from animals. Yeah. Um, you know, things like that. You, you think, thing is, you think of, uh, you know, the Southeast. I don't even know what the Southeast is really known for uh, food wise. And then, of course, you know, you, you you have the major metropolitan areas that fight for their cuisine. You know, L.A. has got their stuff. Chicago obviously has their stuff. You know, the, you know, Eastern Seaboard has their stuff. I mean, ah. Uh, Parker's Barbecue, North Carolina. Simple as that. Bring the vinegar-laden pork into place, folks. Oh, yeah. There. There okay. you go. I just solved it. Obviously, I'm going with the Northeast. <laughs> I, I know. But what? wait, but seriously, what other than pizza? Oh, yeah, I'm going to give you because I, pizza's going to be the number one thing, obviously. But I would like to get that Massachusetts, Vermont flair to it Ooh. and have solid, fresh fish i would oh. like to see more raw bars more new england clam chowders more lobsters some crabs you know because the northeast you can be getting the maryland crabs which by the way everybody whenever you go to maryland and they tell you they're fresh blue maryland crabs they're lying to you there's actually not many crabs caught in the state of maryland they're actually from delaware fun fact um delaware so Delaware. I mean, you, now granted, you're not going to be getting barbecue from the Northeast. It's just not going to happen. Um, but you are going to be getting the food. You're going to be getting the pizza, the Italian food, good Chinese food. I mean, no, you can't really bring that. But no, you're getting good. You know, you're getting that good Italian, New Jersey, New York flair. You're going to be getting the fresh fish from the North, uh, from Massachusetts, and everything. The Snow King crab legs and all that. Um, Things all in that nature. <laughs> Lots the <of> rolls. <laughs> I love it. Um, you guys making fun of the way I speak? No, we're not going to go into the. We're not going to go into another episode of. <laughs> we did that episode one time, and it was well. Actually, it was people loved it. Um, yeah, it, it's it's. Uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Redneck egg rolls and Chicago style beef sandwiches. Oh I think yeah, it's a redneck egg roll. I don't know. Oh, you don't know either. Okay. But it sounds for some reason I'd try it. But Chicago style beef sandwiches, simple portillos, just, you know, simple as that. New Jersey does have good Chinese food. It's something with our water. It's got to be. Yeah, it's just, you know, I I I'll tell you this. I spent I spent a week in, you know, around Boston. And uh absolutely loved the food in Boston. You know, it's it's just 
the clam chowder. Oh yeah. So good. So, so good. Um, okay. So I think it's my turn now, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Real well, first, bagels. Yes. And some <clears throat> pork roll. Go ahead, a what? Sorry. Pork roll. Oh, pork roll. I thought he yeah. said a support roll. I'm like, That's too. a bagel and a support <laughs> roll. <laughs> yeah. If um, whatever falls off sandwich one falls in the second sandwich. But it's like when you eat tacos, you always keep it. People laugh at me. You always put a soft shell on the top of the plate. When you're eating your hard shell, everything that falls out of that hard shell now falls into taco plate. And then you could eat the next taco. Okay. And Michelle basically defines the, what was it? The redneck roll, redneck egg roll, um, pulled pork, cheese and Carolina keys and Carolina slaw in an egg roll wrapper and deep fried. That's disgusting. Sounds delicious. <laughs> That's terrible. I mean, you know, Michelle, I'm, I, I may have to, Oh, I'm going to give that recipe to my friend who owns a barbecue place here. Oh yeah. I don't know if we'll be friends after that, but, um, I'll have to, I'll have to give that a try. All right. So I'm going to ask your opinion on something and I know it's going to be a tough one because I know you're not necessarily a huge movie buff, but I want your opinion on this. Okay. Stop making star Wars movies. I can agree. No. <laughs> Bite your tongue. <laughs> um, what you think about not necessarily Disney remakes, but what you think about, a movie such as the the remake of the Lion King, which is basically photorealistic CGI. And I sorry, I, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Now I got something else to add to it, but go ahead. I think it's a lazy. Really, I think it's lazy. I think all these remakes are lazy. But I'm not talking about. I'm not necessarily talking about the remake itself. I'm talking mainly about the technology behind it. It's beautiful. I think the concept behind it is lazy. What you're telling me when you're doing all these remakes and you're bringing all this technology and not that they're not fantastic, not that they're great. What you were telling me is you don't have a good idea. You don't have a good idea to start the next franchise. You don't have a good idea to set, put out that next movie. You're telling me all those creative minds, you're not going to come up with a new storyline, a new character, a new princess, a new whatever. It's lazy. Not and once again, I'm not killing the idea. I have bought my IMAX tickets already for Lion King. I'm super excited about it. I love, you know, some of the remakes that they've done, the new live actions. They're wonderful. At the end of the day, you're being lazy. Where what happened to the days? I mean, yeah, all right. So Pixar, we saw that, you know, their big boom through the 90s and then they kind of petered out. Then you saw them come back. I mean, you're talking about planes, cars, um, what else? Big heroes. Keep, keep in mind, planes was not done through Pixar. No, no, I'm just naming like originals that they came out with. Sure. Uh, not counting any remakes. So planes, cars, Big Hero Six, Up, um, Wally, Ratatouille, uh, Inside Out. These were great original movies that they went on a tear with. Whether they were Pixar, Disney affiliates, whatever the case is, and that. He's doing this weird picture thing again. And then, um, no, Mary, I have not seen Toy Story 4 yet. That's why we have not talked about it. Um, it just, to me, it's crazy that everybody's like, oh, this is so cool. I'm like, yeah, it is, but you're being lazy. I, I'm not saying stop doing it, but why can't you put out Coco and the remake of Lion King? You see what I'm saying? Like you could still do the remake of Lion King. You can add this beautiful technology to it, but where's my Coco? Where's my Moana? Where's my, you know, cars? Where is this next franchise? Where is the next franchise? I mean, I'm not even, I don't care about sequels. I don't care about Toy Story 4. I don't care about Frozen 2. I don't care if you want to make a sequel. To me, a sequel, you're, you're still coming up with a new storyline. With the Lion King, you are just literally making it prettier see the interesting part is is i was really hoping to get your two cents more on movie makers going to more cgi than for, even for any story rather than the the very well thought out comments you just made in regards to the remakes because the reason why i was thinking that is have we really gotten to a part where we're going to lose touch with real actors 
That was kind of what I was wondering. Well, I mean, the real actors, I mean, they're still doing voiceover work. So it's not like, you know, that they're computer generated voices. True. But also, you know, I also think of things like, oh, what's. Okay. Avatar was done through motion capture. Mo- vast majority of it. Yeah. Obviously, that's, in essence, that's a form of am- animation. Uh, if you if you play almost any really good video game worth its salt, it's going to be motion capture animation. Yeah. You know, that's one thing to take into consideration. I just kind of wonder if this means that we're going to see a shift in movie making in general. You know, how are we going to start making a determination between, you know, cl- a, a real live person versus something that isn't, you know, that's, that's just what I was kind of getting at to begin with. I, I totally understand where you were coming from. And so you actually have your tickets to see the Lion King for next week, huh? Correct. Mundo going on the Sunday, 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 Sunday. So are you now? So you got your IMAX tickets. <clears throat> Never been to IMAX. A little worried about it. <clears throat> so what do you think is the best seat in the house to actually, you know, to actually enjoy a movie though? Are you the kind of person that likes to try to get the seats that are smack dab in the middle of the theater? Yeah. yeah no, I don't care about being in the middle. I want to be up high though. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, well, I like, I don't, especially IMAX. It's such a big screen. I get motion sickness very quickly. And the Lion King, it's going to, first of all, there's two reasons I'm going to get sick. One, there's a lot of moving around. Two, I got to watch probably one of the greatest Disney fathers die on an IMAX screen. All right. I cried on my little black and white in my room. I'm going to really cry when that poor puppy gets trampled by those wildebeest or what were they? No, no cantaloupes. No, what was not cantaloupe (laughs) antelopes? What what did he get? What did he get run over by? No, uh, the, what was in that herd? I don't know, but I'm crying thinking about it. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to get sad. Uh, no, I'd like to sit up top, um, away from it. I really prefer the top row. So no one's behind me. No one's kicking my seat. Um, and I wait, 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 wait. The top row is only for people who are on dates, macking with their girlfriend. Oh gosh, Danny! <laughs> oh, why not yeah. Toy Story? I honestly, I just uh, Lindsay's mom was the one who bought. We're going as a family to see um, Lion King. Um, that's the only reason why we have the tickets. Um, you know, if you go, if you go now to see Toy Story Four, chances are you're going to be like almost a private showing. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with that. It's just we were supposed to go the weekend it came out, and I got jammed up at work. And then um, movies in the summer for me are tough. I don't like to give up multiple hours to see a movie when it's 90 degrees outside, and I can go get a nice round of golfing, or I can go sit by the pool. You know, so it is tough. You know, even with home renovations, we have literally put the house on hold. Because we're like, I, I told him, I'm like, we're not, we're not doing a darn thing. I mean, I got vacation coming up at the end of June. I mean, July, I'll work on a little bit here and there, but no, I'm not giving up perfectly good weather to go watch a movie. As, and then, you know, I love my toy story. I'll get it. Right. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Well, audience, throw in your last, what you think about question. And after, as Danny and I wrap up, we'll take one or two of those because we're at the top of the hour right now. Um, so I guess the, one of the last questions I want to, I want to ask is, uh, you know, what you think is probably one of the best values for like a take home of some sort from a Disney vacation. Now, not necessarily talking about a souvenir, but something that you buy that you think is a good value, whether it be like a shirt, uh, uh, picture frame or something, something that you collect. What do you think is a good value for your dollar when it comes to merch? As a collector of odd things and as a podcaster, I'm going to say any type of the sippy cups or popcorn buckets, as you can see them littered around me. Um, but <clears throat> as just a general traveler and consumer of Disney, I'm going to say coffee mugs. Uh, they come in an array of different weight, shapes, colors, everything like that. And they're, they're, purposeful i mean you use them multiple times so it's not like a shirt where you can wear it a couple times maybe it rips it gets stained you throw it away you forget about it in your drawer i love just coffee mugs i mean because you could put any type of beverage in them 
I, I like, you know, okay. I had a, a press pot that was Mickey type of thing. And the bad part about it is, is that the glass broke. But did that stop me from continuing to use the press pot? No, I just broke the rest of the glass out of it and uh, I'd use it to hold pens and other things here on my desk. Why? Because it's Mickey. Jeez. I got two questions. First up would be Michelle. Yeah. What kind of new IP story do you think Disney should look into or develop? That's a tough question. Not too hard. Okay. Okay. The classic, the actual classic Disney characters, like bring back Pete, Clarabelle Cow, you know, Horace, you know, and bring all like, like those that you would see in the cartoon short, get a horse and build that IP back up the classic Disney, uh, classic Disney characters and build a story around it. I think that would be so cool. That's just what I'd have to say. I I don't have an answer. That is a hard question. Like, are we talking of old IPs or are we creating a new IP out of thin air? If you want me to create a new th- a IP out of thin air, I, I wouldn't be sitting here at 1047 at night in New Jersey. You know, if I can come up with IPs, I'm sure I'd be hired by Disney and, you know, working on it. Um, I, I don't really, I don't have an answer for that. I truly no, don't. How about this? I think Disney should come up with an anime character that can be used with an IP. It, it's, it's, it's something of an, un- keep in mind, we already talked how Big Hero 6 has some anime flavoring to it. It wouldn't be too hard to build a story I got it. Build a storyline around the Kingdom Hearts series. I, I know that you might not. Yeah, not that's not my, my cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, it's not your cup of tea, but it's one of the longest running game based IPs that Disney has that isn't based off of an existing IP. It, I mean, between Sora and some of the other characters. And as well as how they interact, that would be one. That would be kind of interesting, in my opinion. I wouldn't be mad if I can see a new Mickey movie. It's like a new, a new like feature Mickey. Yeah, like dress him up on. I was like a cowboy or something. I don't know. Like just, we haven't had a Mickey movie in a really long time. I wouldn't mind that. All right, last question, and it's a pretty easy one. <laughs> Brian says Zoom Zooms would be interesting <laughs> or could be something. What do you think? Are we getting new monorails? I mean, they're ordered, so that pretty we are getting, we're getting new monorails. This is a matter of time. They take they they're hand built to take a while. It's gonna to be work. years. Don't get me. It's gonna be years. Yeah, I don't. I, it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. They've already reconditioned. So one. I'm going I'm to reword that question for him then, since, since it was you know a softball. Will we see new monorails by the fiftieth? You want my guess? Yeah, yeah, I think we will. Oh, we uh, may not. We, uh-huh. what? I'm talking a whole fleet. Oh, not like not whole one. Entire, like whole entire. It's all done type of thing. Like, what do we have? Four or five colors right now that are active online. Let's call it four that are probably fully active. Are we getting four? Will we have four operational monorails with the old ones taken down by the 50th? All four. That's your criteria. Yeah, that's my criteria. I'm going to say no. I'm gonna say no, but I think I, I think there'll be some, but not all. That's my that's my that's my think. Because Brian and, and, saying they're not ordered, and they're saying a minimum ten years away. Brian, I've never heard that stat anywhere. I highly doubt that it's ten years away. Yeah, you know, they, they, I mean, they don't even take the ten years. All right, last question. I promise we're out. Um, are y'all planning to be going for the fiftieth? I plan on being there that month. Uh, I can't guarantee that my days will fall. 
on the exact one because I'm a little hesitant on being there exactly on the 50th. I think for the show, it'd be wonderful. I think for my peace at mind, I would be really upset because I think that whole week surrounding it is going to be a nightmare. But I'm going to say possibly. Um, if I'm going to be there on the 50th, which I would probably say right now there's a 50-50 chance, it would probably be without my family. That would be the thing. It would, it would be a solo trip or one with Danny. But my family would not have the time to my, – well, my son will not take off school. Yeah, that's right in the middle of school. Yeah, so October. Yeah. One, one, it's a long time away. It's honestly to think about it. it you know, it's it's a long time away. <laughs> we don't need to rush. When you get to a certain age in my genre, you don't want to keep rushing these years. <laughs> They're going too quick, man. All right, take us away. I don't want to talk about this anymore. You know what? You know what I do? Like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna press this button here. And I'm gonna press this button here. <laughs> You heard the show, and we hope you want more. Well, feel free to join us over at our social media platforms. Instagram and our Facebook page can be found at Behind the Ears Podcast. Our webpage is Behind the Podcast.net, and our email is Behind the Ears Podcast at gmail.com. And our Twitter handle is at Behind the Ears PC. And come and join the conversation of all things Disney over at the WDW community page. Don't forget to rate and review the show over at iTunes or Apple Podcasts, as it really helps us get the word out about the show. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or the Podbean app. Also, you can listen to us on Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and via Alexa and Google Herd. Oh, with that being said, thank you everybody for tuning into another episode of Behind the Ears Podcast. Once again, we go live every Tuesday and Thursday at 9.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Facebook and or YouTube. You can always uh, email us any questions, comments, or concerns over to Behind the Ears Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, follow us on all our social media platforms. And Trisha would kill me if I didn't mention it. Please head on over and join the WDW community Facebook page. With that being said, everybody, I hope you all have a safe and wonderful weekend. Um, don't do anything I wouldn't do, you know, or would do, whatever the case may be. With that being said, don't forget, uh, tuck your kids in tight, wear your seatbelts. Once you drink some cranberry juice for Uncle Danny this weekend, have a good one. Hey, I'm Chris. How's it going? We got to go. Hey, so thanks a lot for joining us. Really super appreciate it. Thank you for making us a fan favorite, a top ranked podcast. And you know what? We really appreciate all your support. But I'll tell you what, until we meet again, we hope you have an absolutely magical day. Take care.